And we are back on Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Shanafel, and I am now joined by Atlanta Falcons beat writer for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, uh, D. Orlando Ledbetter. Thanks for joining the show, D. Orlando. How's it going? Oh, it's going really good, Chris. Just uh, anxious to get started. I don't know. Uh, usually this time of the year, I'm uh, you know trying to get in the last little bit of vacation and, and so forth, and, uh, but uh, you know, I'm ready to go to practice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Let's start off by talking a bit about last season. The Atlanta Falcons had a great year winning their first eight games of the regular season and uh, finished 13-3. and We got to see Matt Ryan win his first NFL playoff game over the Seahawks and making an appearance in the NFC Championship game where, unfortunately, they fell to the San Francisco 49ers in a close one, 24-28. What were some things, both positive and negative, that you took from the Atlanta Falcons in the 2012-2013 NFL season? Well, the biggest positive was the uh, offense was able to stay on track and elevate a little bit under the new coordinator, Dirk Cutter. They took uh, the basis... Uh, foundation of what Mike McCarthy had installed here, and uh, you know, built on top of that, not uh, uh, you know, allow the team uh, to uh, uh, move the ball effectively on um, through the screen and draw game, along with some vertical passing. So I think going forward, uh, those are areas that can only improve. Uh, the negative, the major negative, is that they haven't been able to build a sustainable defense. Uh, they've been able to keep uh, a unit together that's in the low 20s, uh, you know, high 20s, 24, 23 range, and they clearly had problems uh, covering tight ends and against the read options. So uh, those are things that the team will have to improve going forward. Uh, you know, they spent the most of their draft picks on uh, in that area and picked up O.C. Manure from the Giants to help the pass rush out. So uh, the big positive was the offense clearly a move to elite status, and uh, uh, the clear negative is that uh, things still need to be uh, improved on the defensive side of the ball. And focusing a little bit on the Atlanta Falcons quarterback, Matt Ryan, he threw for over 4,700 yards, la- I, I, yeah, uh, yeah, 4, yards uh, last season, 32 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Some would say that was his best season in his career thus far. What does uh, D. Orlando Ledbetter think of that? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, just the one game stuck out, the uh, Arizona game, where he did five picks and they still somehow managed to win. Uh, the thing that uh, uh, impressed me most was, uh, uh, you know, going over the film of the NFC game, I saw a, a, a quarterback who was uh, reading defenses at a uh, – 100% right. I mean, his time and his accuracy was just uh, marvelous as they built that lead up. Now, the hit started to take their toll and might have played a part in them not pulling that game out. But you saw an elite quarterback who felt the rush, who recognized where the ball was supposed to go. He delivered it time after time. And it had to frustrate the 49ers to some degree. But they kept coming and they kept coming and they uh, uh, won the game. But that was just a marvelous performance in a defeat that you go, you know, it's going to one of the best you're going to see, uh, you know, in defeat. You know, uh, that's I saw certainly in a long time. Yeah, absolutely, and get this, uh, I turn on the TV this morning and I see Ron Jaworski of ESPN ranked Matt Ryan as the fifth best quarterback in the NFL. That puts him over Drew Brees, Ben Roethlisberger, Eli Manning, some pretty good names there on Ron Jaworski's list. Would you rank Matt Ryan, quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons, as the fifth best quarterback in the NFL? Uh, I would I would certainly say he's up there. I mean, there's only one I'd take in front of him, uh, maybe two. Uh, I certainly would, would, you know, Aaron Rodgers and uh, Peyton Manning, you know, if I got to pick, uh, you know, and then Ryan would, would be in that next group. And, uh, you know, I just uh, I just like the way Aaron moves around back there under duress a little bit better than, than Matt. Matt's got to have that clean pocket. He can move a little bit, but not. Uh, Uh, but, you know, I think Matt's young 
younger is, is wow. Give him the advantage there. Uh, and, you know, Eli's, you know, he's got two Super Bowl wings, a little bit, you know, uh, you know, helter skelter at times. And, uh, of course, Tom Brady's not up there in my one, two because of age. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I'd pick Matt above Matt, uh, Tom Brady either. But, uh, certainly he's in the discussion of the younger guys who are coming. Uh, you know, he's got it done in the regular season. And, uh, uh, you know, if he can get a little bit better help from his defense, maybe he can uh, uh, take this team to uh, New York in uh, February. Absolutely, absolutely. And last topic I want to touch on about Matt Ryan, and that is his contract situation. Just last week, the Detroit Lions gave Matthew Stafford, who still had two years remaining on his contract, a three-year extension worth over $41 million guaranteed dollars. With Matt Ryan entering the final year of his contract, when does he sign a new one? Early in the season, mid-season, after the season? What do you think? I'm thinking that we should hear something here uh, uh, in the coming days. I think it's uh, uh, vital to get the uh, deal done uh, before going into the season. And uh, Andrew Brandt, one of the former executives with the Green Bay Packers that, uh, you know, I covered him up there uh, in the 90s, Andrew said, hey, the two slash point dates are hey, right before training camp and then right before the next uh, opening is right before the beginning of the season. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm expecting uh, to get a call here. You know, I, I mean, I will, but, uh, uh, you know, certainly before training camp, uh, you know, is uh, starts next Thursday. I mean, we're ready to go. We got, you know, uh, background stories and quotes from people and, you know, we're just waiting for for the news uh, to break and if they don't, then right before the season. Uh, I don't believe they want to go into the season with a uh, potential distraction of this nature. This team uh, doesn't want that. I know the owner does. I know it doesn't. So uh, they can hammer this thing out. Uh, you know, the next coming weeks, uh, uh, that'll be... Uh, when we should uh, look to see the deal done. You guys are listening to Sportsman Radio. I'm your host, Chris Schenfeld, talking with Atlanta Falcons beat writer for Atlanta Journal Constitution, D. Orlando Ledbetter. And uh, switching gears here, you guys have made some noise in free agency, signing some big names, including running back Steven Jackson, and like you mentioned earlier, defensive end OCU Minora. How much of an impact are you expecting from these guys on the team this season? Well, I think uh, O.C. looks very determined based on, uh, you know, watching him uh, handle himself in the off-season workouts and uh, uh, coming to the practice field focused. Uh, he always wanted to be with the uh, uh, Falcons. He's uh, always wanted to be the lead horse up in New York. And, uh, uh, you know, now he's going to get his chance here. He's not too old to do it. Uh, 31, 32, I believe, is uh, his age range. And, uh I certainly expect a big year from him. And uh, Jackson has shown uh, he can run without blocking. So he, he that could just be uh, just be amazing to see him play on the team with a chance to win. It's going to be uh, uh, you know something special for him and his fans. You guys were able to re-sign one of, if not the best tight end in the history of the NFL, Tony Gonzalez, for two more years after claiming he would retire after last season. Now, I know you guys did lose some cornerbacks due to free agency, but let's say Gonzalez did retire. Would you guys have drafted a tight end in the first round of the 2013 NFL draft? Yeah, they were uh, prepared. Uh, they started the tight ends, uh, you know, going back to Pettigrew and the kid uh, Gresham at Cincinnati and Kyle Rudolph and uh, you know this year of course it was the Eastern and uh, the uh, you know Notre Dame kid so uh, I get them two mixed up now Urch Urch was uh, Stanford and Eastern Notre Dame uh, yeah I believe they would have had to take one of those guys uh, had Tony uh, you know uh, stayed retired that's why they wanted to know going into the draft. Uh, that day, I uh, had to go in that direction. So, uh, Eifert and uh, Ertz were on their radar screen. They all went out to Stanford and worked Ertz out, and they liked him, and they, you know, gave him the old stand-by-the-phone thing. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, they would have definitely looked at a tight end if Tony didn't come back. 
And speaking of the NFL draft, you guys selected cornerback out of Washington, Desmond Trufant in the first round, and another cornerback in the second round in uh, Robert Alford. How do you feel about the 2013 Atlanta Falcons rookies? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical, um, Chris, because you generally don't see the rookies come in. And that's a tough position to come in at, cornerback. Uh, you know, but in the passing league now, uh, that's really, you know, the precedent. Uh, they should go to the old 49er team when they, you know, they had a very veteran defense. They flipped three of the four positions in the secondary uh, with the rookies and, you know, kept it going. But they also had, you know, all those superstars over there on offense. So uh, it's very really difficult for the corners to come in and, uh, you know, keep their head up and uh, turn in dominating performances as rookies. So, uh they're going to get them ready to play. They haven't had any problems with uh, uh, being shy about playing rookies around here. They did it uh, uh, every year with uh, Coach Smith. He's get the rookies. He told them uh, Matt Ryan to Julio Jones and Sam Baker to Curtis Lofton to Sean Winston. They've all got them ready to play. So uh, I'm just kind of skeptical of the cornerbacks uh, just because, uh, you know, it's a passing league and teams know how to – to target them and zero in on them. So uh, they, they, they won't be able to hide out there, that's for sure. It doesn't help when you're seeing a Mar Marquise Colston, Steve Smith, and Vincent Jackson uh, two times a year either, does it? <laughs> you know, but they, the one good thing is those two guys can get ready and practice. If they're going to practice every day like it's a game, and they're going up against Julio, Roddy, and Harry Douglas, uh, they should be ready. <laughs> they should be ready or they're going to fall apart. Uh, one or the other uh, is uh, how that's going to happen. Uh, the Falcons haven't been shy about uh, selecting which guys they get to cover one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, they're doing everything they can to get them ready to go. The season is right around the corner, D. Orlando. We have preseason going on next month, and on September 8th, the Falcons are going to New Orleans to play the NFC South division rival in the Saints. Are you ready for some football? Oh, no question about it. I'm ready for some football. I don't know about the preseason stuff, but, uh, uh, you know, that's, we'll get through that and ready for uh, the real stuff in September. And last question before I let you go, sir, and that is, what are your expectations for the Atlanta Falcons this season? Hey, Mr. Ledbetter, once again, I really appreciate your time. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Before I let you go, is there anything you'd like to plug on the air for myself and our listeners? Oh, sure. Just, you know, if they can, uh, we appreciate it. They can follow us on Twitter at AJC Falcons. And, uh, you know, we have two websites for our premium content. Uh, at, uh, at myajc.com, myajc.com, and then you know, our blogs, analysis, and, and so forth are on ajc.com. And uh, thanks for having me on the show. Once again, it was a pleasure, dear Orlando. Hopefully we can stay in touch and take care, all right? Okay, great, Chris. Thanks,